Well, something along the same lines as mm-hmm. as the guy that was talking about, uh, you know, prayer, not healing people and that sort of thing. Um, as I said before, I'm just now coming around to seeing your um, point of view. Oh, welcome, welcome. I was welcome. raised in church and, you know, my dad was a preacher and all that good stuff. But anyway, my sister is still very much uh, a Christian and her husband. Um, a little bit of background on, on him. Uh, in his first marriage, he was a faith healer and his wife cheated on him. And he broke away from the church. And then, of course, when him and Debbie got together, uh, we were going to, I don't know how much you know about Primitive Baptist Church, but uh, that's what we were going to. And um, anyway, now he's gone back to preaching. So I kind of don't know how to do anything except drop hints. Yeah. But she called me today and was talking about they were wanting to quit smoking. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, the first thing I said was, well, if you got enough faith, you know, you can pray about it. Um, yeah. And she made a comment that she didn't seem to have as much faith as she used to. <laughs> hmm. And that's kind of where way I started coming to your side of thinking. Uh, now, the terminologies that y'all use, I don't understand all of them. Um, like the theist, I'm not real sure if I'm a theist or what. Uh, uh, I'd actually be happy to talk to you about that a little bit. Categories just don't bother me, you know. Sure, I mean, I'd be happy to talk uh, to you anyway, a little bit But anyway, I was just wondering if, you know, you might have some advice for me as to if I keep up with how they're getting along with their stop smoking campaign. Um, I can sort of let them know how I'm believing nowadays. Oh, um, so I, th- there are a couple things there. Um, I would love to talk to you about the difference between theist and atheist and the terms, but I want to answer your question first. Um, and I, it's, it's never a one size fits all. It always yeah. depends on the people who are who you're interacting with. Um, I know from my personal experience that being vocal about asking questions and saying, you know, this didn't make a lot of sense to me, or I'm wondering about this, what do you think? I was asking those questions, honestly, when I was having those problems, I really didn't think that it was an issue. And then eventually, when I did come out to my family as an atheist, they weren't that surprised. <laughs> um, they, and, 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 and that seems to be kind of a common thing. Um, but if that's not the place that you want to go, I know that there are some people who, you know, for, for the sake of wanting to maintain relationships in their family, never tell them. Um, nobody's going to get mad at you. I mean, it's, 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 it's okay. You know, but if you're safe and, and, and you'd like to, it's definitely nice to be the face, you know, that people think of instead of just thinking about those damn baby eating Satan worshiper atheists, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, and being able to say, no, you know, somebody can not have a, not believe and not be a bad person, you know. Yeah, um, for sure. And I mean, I would say that, you know, in coming out, you know, this is something that I've talked about before and it's... It's interesting. I think that there's a merit to a lot of different kinds of approaches. Mm-hmm. But one thing I want to make sure that people know, because we hear stories of, oh, you know, I there's, there's like videos that people like Hemet Meta has posted a bunch of times or, or written articles about. Someone says, I'm an atheist. And then someone hits them or kicks them out of the house. Or uh, someone says, oh, you're not going to get any presents for Christmas now. You know, first of all, I mean, that's awful that anybody would be like that in the first place. But another thing is you can be out and proud, so to speak, without basically walking up, hey, I'm an atheist, what are you going to do about it? You know, it doesn't have to be that way. It sounds like you're going through a process, and I think that that's what this entire thing is. It's not reaching a conclusion at all. You know, I think that atheism in the first place is a byproduct of 
critical thinking, and critical thinking is what we continue to apply. If critical thinking, thinking brought me to not be an atheist, then I just wouldn't be an atheist. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll see. You know? um, so I think that it's okay to reflect that you're going through a process. You know, maybe you even want to work through this process with them. You know, they're family. Obviously, I, I would imagine that you say that you love them, and hopefully they would say the same to you. And I, I don't imagine that coming at it and saying, you know, like I've had different thoughts lately and I'm just really, I'm really thinking about all this stuff and I'd really like to just kind of like talk to you or ask you questions. What do you think about this? The best way to get someone to actually change their mind is to give them good questions and let them go home and think about it on their own. People don't hear other people's conclusions and go, yep, yeah, I think I think that now. Completely 180. No one does that. No. This doesn't really happen. They go home, <laughs> mull around a little bit and sometimes it's for a couple of years and eventually they're like, that was a really good question. I'm glad that, that somebody asked that, and now my mind is different. That's where, objectively, Dan, that's where... Yes. <laughs> that's well, how he did it. And, and I, I know that I, personally, when I would hear those things, I would go and I'd look up and I'd, somebody, I'd see like a half-baked apologetic, you know, of, of a proof for the existence of yeah. God. And so I'd come back and, oh, what about this? Oh, okay. And, and I'd, <laughs> I'd go back and forth, and eventually, you know, it kind of wore me down, and I was like... Why am I making so many excuses? Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's a process. I it mean, is. And you can reflect that it's a process. It's just being honest, and it's something that families should be able to go through together. And even if you guys come out on, on different sides, maybe the honesty of, you know, I'm going through this, maybe you're going through this too, will help you guys, you know, bond together a little bit. Obviously, don't want to prescribe uh, any, any treatment for you guys. If there's legitimate, you know, mental health issues that you guys are working through, go see a counselor. That's fine. You know, I've done it. A lot of people have done it. It's great. Yeah. So, you know, make sure that you're, you're not ashamed of the resources that you have at your disposal, too. Absolutely. Um, so, a couple other last things to add. Um, finding evidence-based therapy for smoking and for other addiction issues is tough. Yeah. It is really, really tough. Um, I know that I've found a resource that I absolutely love, and that's the Secular Therapy Project mm. put on by the Recovering from Religion yeah. Foundation. Um, give them a call, and even if you know your brother probably won't want to talk to them, but they can actually put you in touch with different resources and therapists, and you know more information than we can give. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. Also, language. Um, Language does play a really huge part in it. And I know at the beginning you were talking about, you know, what is a theist versus an atheist. And there are so many things that, you know, um, I, so I'm assuming you grew up Christian, Kathy? Oh, yes. I did oh, too. yes, definitely. Yeah, same here. And but the thing of it oh, was wow. is even as a child, mm -hmm. I questioned the Bible stories. Uh, I, I, I questioned about Noah, I questioned about uh, who is the guy with the whale. Anyway. Jonah. <laughs> yeah, Jonah. I, they didn't make sense to me. They didn't make sense to me, even as a child. But like I said, you know, I grew up, we did, we were not regular churchgoers. But by the time I was grown, we were going on a fairly regular basis. And then my dad started going to the Primitive Baptist Church, which is what he was raised in, and became a preacher. So, you know, it was really indoctrinated. Yeah. And talking about the um, programs that you can go to, um, I mentioned the last time I called that I was an alcoholic for over 25 years, and it was actually my faith in God that helped me to stop drinking through the program of AA. Yeah. But the biggest thing that I learned and that I try to uh, give to other people even um, was that we are totally powerless. We, can, we can't do anything about what anybody else says or does. We can only control how we react to it. I wouldn't call that and powerless. So this though. is kind of the outlook I take on things. Sure. I, I wouldn't call that powerlessness, though. There's a lot of power in the way that you view the world and the way that you approach it. I, I, I mean, I have a question. Um, hopefully this doesn't pry. And if you don't, if you don't want to answer it, then definitely don't. You know, no just, just say pass. Um, how would you feel if you found that the power that you felt you were tapping into 
to recover from alcoholism was you. Mm -hmm. How would you feel to know that that was you, that was your willpower, that was your mind, that was something that your mind was creating to help you get past it, and maybe it wasn't something supernatural? How would you feel if it was you instead? Well, that was the biggest thing that I had trouble with because I had an experience when I was uh, two weeks sober. I had lost my husband, my previous husband, yeah, to I'm suicide. sorry about that. And um, I got sick and was stuck here with that grief by myself. And it was getting to the point that I was wanting to go back out and drink again because of the pain. Yeah. And I prayed that God would not let me do that. And it was as if I physically felt a hand touch me on the top of my head and this warm, glowing feeling just went through my whole body. Well, when Philip started watching you guys, um, he basically started preaching at me. But uh, Booger, is that I you? Out for a long time. <laughs> huh? Is that you? Are you Booger? Yeah. I knew it. Okay. What, Sorry, in, in the chat, that. or is this something I'm not aware of? Uh, oh. It's something. <laughs> People think. People think oh, that that kidding. is just absolutely terrible for him to call me Booger, but it is a love <laughs> term. I call we call each other Booger, you know. <laughs> so, um, but her, her like I was telling them, you know, we've been together. It'll be 18 years next month, and we almost never fight. We argue, but we we never fight, and we because of his health and my health. We are together 24-7. Yeah. Now, how many people do you know that can be together 24-7 and never fight? <laughs> that's that's, that's yeah. amazing, and that is a lot of love. And uh, we, we love your husband, too. <laughs> oh, uh, um, well, I'll tell you what. Y'all have brought some of the greatest joy into his life doing these uh programs for you guys um i i even have started getting involved and he shows me all the workups and all that stuff but you know it, it's given him a real purpose in life as well that's wonderful we're, we're so glad yeah and that's that's what it's all about you know i mean we're atheists kind of what we talk about is we don't believe in something but i like that when we all gather together we can create something beyond that that's ultimately yeah. what it ends up being so i'm glad to hear that you know, these guys have, have done that. I, I strive to be that way, too. <laughs> I... Well, um, you know, supposedly, uh, Christianity is supposed to be all about love. But the reason I stopped going to church several years ago was because I didn't see it. Yeah, well, I mean, that is one I've thing. I've seen more love watching y'all show than I saw in church. That means the world to me. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> Thank you. I, yeah, I mean, I know when I was coming out, I was afraid I was never going to see, I mean, some of the love that I had felt when I was in a church, and I realized, you know, that just comes from people, and people are on the outside of this church, too, and I found, you know, I can find the same love without a bunch of the BS that comes along with it, with all the baggage, you know, and so... Um, I hope that we can keep oh, that forward. Oh, of course they're throwing out the love ring. See, there's a bit of love <laughs> going on. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, well, guys, I'm going to give somebody else a chance to talk, and y'all have a wonderful day. You too. Yeah, thanks for Good calling. Good talking to you. Give Phil a big old hug for us. All right, I sure will. <laughs> Take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye. This show is so wholesome. Right? I love it. It's amazing. So so uh, her husband is Colonel Phil, who's actually also in the comments. Hi, Phil. Um, and he does all of the amazing animations okay. that, that we get to do is because of him. Gotcha. And um, So he yeah. contributed to the Rocket Power intro? That's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm calling uh, it? Or was... Actually, that that was that was us. But the afterward, the uh, you know us in space. Okay. Yeah, us, yeah, yeah. You know, on the pirate ship and awesome. us going through portals and all of that other cool stuff. That's that's all Phil. I love it. That's great. <laughs>